Good afternoon. I would like to kindly thank each one of you for joining us live from Masa University, Sojana Putra. I am Nur Safarina Abdul Samad from the Faculty of Health Sciences, Masa University, and I will be the moderator for today's session. Today's webinar is hosted by the Faculty of Health Sciences, Masa University. The title of today's webinar is about site mining and its health impact in Malaysia. Dear viewers, before we proceed further, I would like to give you a brief overview of the programs offered by the Faculty of Health Sciences, Masa University. Under the Faculty of Health Sciences, we have School of Physiotherapy, Department of Environmental Health, and Department of Medical Imaging. These are all the courses, uh, programs that we offered uh, in the School of Physiotherapy, Department of Environmental Health, and also the Department of Medical Imaging. Why you should join us in health sciences? There are various reasons why you should join us. Um, among them are high job demands, um, no boring work routine, low risk of job redundancy, and high paid salary, among other reasons. We offered up to a master level. In particular, we have Master of Physiotherapy. These are the requirements for the entry uh, in the master's program. These are all the bachelor's program that we offered in Faculty of Health Sciences and the entry requirements. We also offered Diploma in Physiotherapy in Environmental Health and Medical Imaging. And these are the entry requirements for these diploma programs. The newest addition to our programs is Diploma in Occupational Safety and Health. And this is the entry requirement for this program. And infinite excellence is what MASA aspires to provide to each of its graduates. So why choose Faculty of Health Sciences in MASA? So in teaching and learning, we provide experience and dedicated international pool of academic staff. We also provide various of study modes, among others are conventional and ODL. We also have cross-teaching by the experts. We also have accreditation by the MQA, JPA, and other international institutions. And we have dual awards with the Anglia Ruskin University, among other reasons. These are the scholarship that offered in MASA. And we also have collaboration and affiliations with the uh, bodies worldwide. Uh, our student, our student also uh, will undergo the student mobility program or exchange studies in uh, with the overseas university, okay, such as the Ilyo Sosei University in Japan, the lovely professional university in India, and also Sri University Sriwijaya in Indonesia. We have our open day in on the 13th, 13th November and the 14th November. So do come join us on this day. We welcome you to join us. This is all the Masa, uh, the Faculty of Health Sciences stuff. Please feel free to contact us through Masa website or our faculty Facebook page to know more about our program or simply leave a comment and we will get back to you. Your questions concerning this webinar session can be listed in the chat box for discussion during the Q&A sessions. Dear viewers, an e-certificate will be provided for this webinar and to be eligible for this certificate, please fill in the survey form. The link to this survey form will be provided at the end of this session and it can be found in the comment section. On to our session today. Mining has huge economic potential, but the large-scale bauxite mining activities in Malaysia has raised significant environmental concerns. This, in turn, led, leads to environmental health issues uh, for the people who live in the surrounding area. 
This webinar will focus on the impact of mining activities, process and hazards towards the environment and also the health of the people. Let me introduce to you our expert speaker for today's sessions, Dr. Nur Azalina Suzianti Binti Faisal. Dr. Nur Azalina holds a PhD in environmental health, a master's degree in community health sciences, majoring in environmental health, and a bachelor's degree in biomedicine. Her areas of interest are environmental health, toxicology, and human health. Without further ado, please welcome Dr. Nur Azalina. Thank you, Ms. Nusafarina. So I would like to share my screen for a while. All right. Uh, Assalamualaikum and a very good day to all of you. I am Dr. Nazalina Suzianti Faisal, a PhD lecturer from Department of Environmental Health Faculty of Health Sciences, Massa University. So for today's webinar, I would like to discuss on the bauxite mining and its health impact in Malaysia. Uh, in this webinar, I would like to focus on the introduction to mining activity, the main process uh, of the bauxite mining and its hazard that impact on environment, social, economic and as well as health of the people. All right, uh, as mining in Malaysia, mining is one of the main industry in Malaysia, uh, which is Malaysia produce aggregate bauxite, tin, gold, clay, and coal. The earliest type of mining operated in uh, year of 1820 in Para and 1824 in Selangor. Uh, bauxite mining is not known to most of uh, Malaysian until the year 2012 when the annual production of bauxite increased to 100 million per ton. So in year 2016, the Malaysian government had banned the bauxite mining activity due to uh, the environmental damage and water contamination that happened in Kuantan, Pahang. So this bauxite mining is not a new economic activity for Malaysia. This mining activity has taken place in the state of Johor since early year of 2000, while bauxite mining operation in Telo uh, Ramuna, Johor that has been operated for more than 50 years uh, without much controversy, but opposite terms happen in Kuantan where it create a different scenario within a sh uh, short period of time. And now Bosa Mining have been, uh, been stopped for a while and it can begin anytime now. So the main process of bauxite mining, uh, bauxite uh, is generally extracted by open case mining, being almost always found near the surface with the process that varies slightly depending on the location. So before mining, the land need to be clear of the timber and vegetation. Next, the topsoil is removed and usually stored for replacement during rehabilitation. And the layer of the soil uh, under it is top rock and clay and the bauxite layer beneath overburden is uh, broken up using a method of blasting, drilling, ripping using very large bulldozer. So once the bauxite loosened up into the manageable process and loaded up into truck, it transport to crushing, washing plants or to stockpile before it brings ship to the alumina refinery. So why bauxite and what is bauxite? Bauxite is a rock that composed of various minerals. It is an aluminium ore or primary ore that, uh, and the world main sources of aluminium. So it used mainly to make construction, transportation and packaging. Usually the top producer of bauxite are Australia, China, India, Brazil and Indonesia. So natural bauxite ore consists of aluminium hydroxide roughly around 32 to 52 52% titanium outside and reactive silica that can affect human health. So the location of mining activity in relation to human settlement is one of a great concern of uh, to public health, while remote location and well-defined zoning area are common in bauxite mining in order in other country. So there are a number of reasons why bauxite problem which we subsequent propagate to impact our human health if the issue is not resolved or controlled such as release of mineral and other natural occurring impurities include heavy metal, movement of uh, vehicle traffic gases and accident, noise hazard, biological hazard, land and forest destruction and dust. 
So the health of people and the health of planet that we live are inextricably linked. So destruction of our habitat threaten our access to the most fundamental requested for human existence, safe water, clean air, safe food and shelter. The aggressive uncontrolled bauxite mining in Kuantan, if sustained over time, will cause irreversible change such as air pollution, noise pollution, visual pollution, pollution, sea and river water pollution, destruction of fauna and flora ecosystem. All right, we go to air pollution. Um, air pollution is one of the main issue that faced by uh, the community and it uh, release of uh, airborne particulate matter in bauxite mining activities such as site clearance and road building, open pit drilling and blasting, loading and haulage, vehicular movement, or and waste rock handling generate the dust particles. So in general, this particle can be uh, can be classified into coarse uh, particle and fine particle, where coarse particle have a one to ten uh, micrometer range, while five fine particle have zero point one to one micrometer range. The coarse particle commonly uh, originate from erosion, uh, road, soil dust dispersion by wind, as well as atropogenic activities such as vehicle emission. The coarse particle are of lesser concern as study has shown that they tend to deposit in larger airway, hence can be carved out. While fine particle, on the other hand, which are also produced during bauxite mining, can be launched deep with, within the alve alveoli, potentially leading to respiratory and cardio cardiovascular problem. So in this study, uh, in my previous study with my team, I found the highest heavy metal present in ambient air was aluminium, followed by chromium, nickel, lead, cadmium, arsenic, which exceed the ATSDR limit. While the highest heavy metal present in school classroom in uh, indoor air was nickel, followed by arsenic and cadmium. Um, and we also did a study on uh, concentration of dust, heavy metal concentration in, in dust, and we found that nickel is the most higher, followed by lead, arsenic, and cadmium. So you can see from the image, the, uh, the red dust deposit to the uh, window of a quarter next to Kuantan port, and uh, the road stretch over Kuantan port heavily covered by the dark red dust. So from our observation, the whole stretch of road along the Kuantan or to Kuantan port is tainted dark red. The three vehicle, houses, uh, clothes, and food premises along the road of the lorry transporting bauxite were also contaminated with the red dust. So larger particulate matter are associated with uh, nutrient dust, which reduce the environmental amenity, uh, contaminate the clothes, properties, vegetation, and water. So nutrient dust particles are too large to be inhaled. Apart from causing vis visual pollution, it has the potential to cause irritation to eyes, uh, nose, and throat. It also produces visual impact that can lead to mental health stress, especially to those living in proximity to mining site particularly when it can be seen from their home. So um, the fine particle uh, cause or trigger the occurrence of respiratory and cardiovascular disease. Uh, the WHO advised that there is no safe level of fine particulate air pollution, PM10 and PM2.5. Both PM10 and PM2.5 are respirable um, particles that can penetrate deep into our respiratory system and associated with increase of hospital admission for heart and lung disease and premature death. So there are surveillance data gathered from Bukit Go Health Clinic where the increase in patient activity attendance for asthmatic and upper respiratory tract infection. So this is a several data that we got from our committee. The reported health symptoms among respondents were divided into three types. We did uh, general health, respiratory, and dermal symptoms. This one we uh, get using self-constructed qu uh, questionnaire. So these symptoms were reported by the respondent uh, exposed to high level of PM10 as, uh, as well as very high level of PM10. So this is the study among community living nearby the mining where we can see the most reported uh, in general symptom is uh, stress due to nasal and dry cough, while dermal symptoms is itchiness.
All right. So for this one is the study in uh, among the children uh, schooling in mining area. So the highest reported symptoms among children in study area were cough and flu together, followed by nasal congestion and running nose. While in comparative area where the non-mining area uh, were cough and flu together and cough only. So the symptoms, headache, dizziness, diagnosed asthma, running nose, uh, chest tightness after outdoor activity and itchiness shows significant difference between study area and comparative area. Next, we go to the water pollution. Water pollution. Uh, most of the surface water in the world consists of stream, river, uh, spring, ponds and lakes. So these water sources closely interact with soil and rocks off on the aforementioned surface, the temperature and pH of the environment. It influences the absorption and this option of inorganic and organic matter. So the sources of water pollution are mainly related to extensive land clearing, extraction of bauxite leading to soil er erosion and sedimentation. Washing of bauxite and influence from the bauxite, bauxite washing pond, which flow into the nearby uh, river and stockpile of bauxite in large quantity without a proper drainage system. So, water contamination by bauxite mining activity can cause harm due to the component of iron and aluminium and other toxic matter. The most significant impact of heavy metal on a river is on the sediment, aquatic organism, and the water itself. While heavy metal, it do not degrade but deposit in the sediment to be taken up by plants, animals, or by feeding benthic animals. So, it can cause severe mud flood due to the soil erosion and surface uh, of surface run of clear land. Okay, so uh, uh, in located downstream, the mining activity have a great potential to contaminate the drinking water. There were four water treatment plants located in the area of bauxite mining, Bukit Go, Bukit Sagu, Bukit Ubi, uh, and Semambu water treatment plant in Kuantan. So Bukit Go Kuantan water treatment plant was closed on 20, uh, December 29, 2015 due to the severe pollution of Sungai Riau. Uh, it showed that a bauxite washing pond whereby the influent water was discharged into Sungai Tawai that flow downstream caused severe pollution to Sungai Riau. Water sample taken for nearby residents have exceeded the health ministry aluminium level of 0 0.2. Uh, 0 0.2 uh, uh, mg per liter, while mercury level were uh, 0 0.0093 uh, mg per liter, that nine times above the recommended level for raw water. However, continuous drinking water monitoring by Pahang State Health of uh, Department has reported that the concentration of aluminium and iron in drinking water has yet to exceed the national drinking water quality standard. So the potential of leaching of heavy metal and pro product of bauxite mining into nearby water sources is another concern as they have a long-term effect on both adult and children, such as neurotoxicity, nephrotoxicity, cardiovascular disease, neurodevelopmental delay, as well as increase, increased risk of malignancy and mortality. Uh, chronic exposure to toxic matter may cause multiple organ toxicity and increase cancer risk in future. So high level exposure to aluminium in stomach, example, prevent the absorption of phosphate, a chemical compound that require for health for healthy bones and may cause bone disease in children. All right, for soil pollution, soil is one of the most important elements in the ecosystem as it provides nutrients for the plants and it also the major site of degradation and transfer of biomass. Soil can form solid phase where it comprises mostly minerals and organic matter or fluid phase involve iron in track and entering the soil system. The excessive presence of heavy metal in soil is uh, detrimental as it inhibit such process and biodegradation of organic contaminants. In addition, higher soil contaminants lower the fertility of the soil and can impact agricultural activity and decrease the food quality and ultimately causing the food shortage. So open case bauxite mining create artificial feed pits with large volume of calcareous debris that destabilize the environmental balance by changing the um, changing the geomorphological uh, process where the bauxite contaminated soil can be detrimental to health as it contain, contain and can contaminate soil 
uh, and water sources used in agriculture. Food products have been identified as a major pathway for human exposure to heavy metal compared with inhalation and of soil particles, skin contact, and drinking water. Heavy metal can accumulate in plant produced products that include lead, cadmium, and arsenic. So, chronic uh, uh, consumption of cadmium causes uh, kidney and bone damage, cancer, low birth weight, and spontaneous abortion. Right. So this is the study that done in a uh, school area uh, in my Bausa mining area. So the highest heavy metal concentration obtained in soil of the school area are nickel, followed by lead and arsenic and cadmium. While the comparative area is um, uh, lead, nickel, arsenic and cadmium. There is significant difference of heavy metal concentration in soil between the study and comparative area. So some of the mining activity are located close to and within the con community settlement that make the environmental pollution a real concern to the community. That happened in uh, Kuantan Pahang where the Bausa mining area is with less than five kilometers than the community area. So um, uh, usually it occur in three phase to the bauxite mining area, extraction of bauxite using heavy machinery and movement of lorry from mining area to stop pipe uh, place. Uh, Abdurrah et al. and Hussein et al. 2016 reported that noise pollution affect bauxite miner and neighborhood community as mining is carried out around the clock. So potential health effects include noise induced he hearing loss, uh, loss of hearing sensitivity and sleep disturbance. So noise has been associated with cardiovascular and physiological effect along with behavior and cong cognitive impact. Resident, li uh, resident living near my mine are subjected to the mental stress. So due to the high iron oxide content, the nearby community get tainted dark red and this visual disturbance can cause stress and the health impact of outside dust on individual water and food sources also as it in store. So um, there are ways to reduce the mining impact. So how can Malaysia overcome this mining issue is towards the lower impact mining technique uh, using the where the Traditional mining techniques have severe impact on environment and some popular methods like open pit and underground mining. So by instead, uh, we use the new alternative low impact technique like in situ leaching that can be reduced uh, surface disturbance at mining site, lower the soil erosion and more or less material that will need the backfill. And second uh, way to reduce the mining impact, we reuse the mining waste where mining usually produces a significant amount of waste such as rocks and waste water. In many cases, uh, they leave the waste behind the mining operation that prone to fail, failure the environmental damage. We can use the waste rocks in simple on-site constru construction while the mine's water can be used as a coolant for agriculture purpose or on-site dust uh, suppression. Okay, third way is we can uh, use the eco-friendly equipment where to reduce the environmental impact by using battery drive, uh, dri battery driver mining equipment to replace the DC driver option. So this improves the durability and reduce the environmental cost of damage equipment and can simple switch like adopting the tire that provide better longevity. And the last one, we can rehabilitate the mining site wh where many modern uh, mining techniques cause significant disruption to the environment like stripping the top soil layer necessary for plant growth and raising soil and water acidity, making that uh, uh, inhospitable to the new vegetation and leaving it prone to soil erosion. So as the conclusion, this review has highlighted that bauxite mining repercussion on the environment through destruction of ecosystem that include harming of the air, water, food, soil, as well as flora and fauna of the mining area. Bauxite mining affect the health of miner and surrounding community, especially children and high-risk uh, high risk group of uh, population along with environmental po population uh, pollution this is particularly true that happened in Kuantan due to the poor demarcation and proximity mines to the neighborhood community so there is a still a knowledge gap regarding the long-term health impact of bauxite mining because chronic illness take time to manifest 
manifest later in life. So hence a detailed research need and require to identify the area that need improvement to implement the measure to control and manage the impact of bauxite mining on the environment as well as human health. So we should be reminded that the lack of evidence of destruction and harm to the environment and humans should not be used as an excuse not to act or to delay action. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Zalina, for such an insight, insightful presentation. Yeah? Dear viewers, if you have any question for our speaker, please leave a comment in the chat box. Yeah? Okay, so maybe we try to look at the questions in the comments, yeah. Um, okay, so the first question, okay, I would like to uh, ask this to Dr. Azalina, yeah, uh, from Mr. Uh, Rajan Sundra, yeah, uh, the question on what are the long-term health effects on the people, especially the children and also the elderly, yeah? residing near the bauxite mining area and those residing along the routes of transportation. Yeah, Dr. Azalina, if you may. All right. Uh, thank you, Mr. Rajan Sundra. So uh, the long-term health effect of the people, especially children, because we did a study on uh, heavy metal concentration in their biomarkers, such as hair, um, toenail, hair to and toenail. So uh, we found that the concentration of heavy metal were uh, uh, were high in the biomarker, uh, in the accumulation of biomarker. So in the long term, we afraid that they might have a, a, a cancer, which is um, skin cancer or any um, uh, neurobehavior effects that lead to their uh, behavior and their education problem. Sorry, Hello? Yeah, sorry for that. Okay. Uh, we asked another question, maybe from um okay. So maybe from uh Miss Tunkuni Lame. Uh hi Dr. Aza, looking at the pollutions happen at the area and its effect to the health community living near the area, in your opinion, why does this mining still happen? Yeah. All right, thank you. Uh Tengku Nilam. Okay, why does this mining still happen? Okay, Bausa industry have a good potential business and good profitability that return to our country. So all action taken hereafter should be in line with the need of the community and legislation. So um, it is not you. Uh, it is not uh, wrong for the industry to reoperate back as long as the uh, government agency and mining operate Bausa ensure that the governance and uh, and compliance of the police policy and procedure in a place. Okay, okay. So maybe we take uh, another question, yeah, Dr. Azza. Um, okay, from uh, another one, I like this question from Mr. Rajin Sundra. People who are working occupational exposure in the about site mines, eh, probably had some form of respiratory response. Any report from the surrounding clinics or the hospital on this? Okay, uh, thank you, Mr. Rajan. So we don't have uh, a report from uh, from a workers, but we do have a reports and complaints from the uh, community that living nearby because they are they have uh, a clinic kesihatan in Bukit Go. So uh, they. They have a report whereby the um the children having the asthmatic and admission to the clinic is higher and increased during the bauxite mining activity compared to before uh before the bauxite mining activity been held. Okay, thank you, Dr. Aza. So maybe we ask uh, one more last question, yeah, from uh Ho Kahyo, yeah, Mr. Ho Kahyo. What are the preventions and precautions for the workers that work for bauxite mining? Prevention and the precaution for the workers that work for bauxite mining. Thank you, Miss Ho Kahyo. Um, for my point of view, um. 
uh, because um, the workers itself, they have a lack of PPE. They just like, uh, at some of them is unregulated minor and some of them, um, which is from the company itself, um, they tend to ignore the PPE itself. Okay, so we have we as a um, we as a education uh, we have a, like a lecture or any education we have to implement the preventive to the workers to uh, uh, for the PPE itself implement the PPE itself. Okay, thank you, Doctor Zalina. So maybe that's the last question that we ask for this session, yeah. Okay, thank you, Dr. Azalina. And uh, dear viewers, as mentioned in the beginning of the webinar, an e-certificate will be provided. And to be eligible for the certificate, you will need to fill in the survey form that can be found in the link provided in the comment session. Okay. With that, we conclude today's session. To our dear speaker, thank you again for joining us for today's session and especially thank you for the uh, sharing of the knowledge. Yeah? To our keen and attentive viewers, thank you very much for joining us uh, to, in the webinar today. We look forward to your comments and participation in our future events hosted by Masa University. So for, the, for further queries, please contact us through the Masa website or visit us through our social media. Have a pleasant day.